Hello, I'm Yan Fang, and today I'm going to describe ADP, an in-network aggregation service tailored for mountain-to-mount -mount rack machine learning jobs. Our work seeks to accelerate distributed DNA training. Before I dive into ATP, let's first have a brief overview of how the distributed training works with the parameter server architecture, which ATP designs for. The main components of the PS architecture are workers and the parameter servers. In this example, there is one PS. After the workers generate a set of gradients from its GPU computation, it splits the whole gradient set into a set of packets. In this example, say A and B. Workers first transmit A to the PS. The PS does the aggregation across all the workers and then do some complex computation, for example, optimization. Finally, it multicasts the results, call the parameters back to all the workers. Then the workers transmit B. It repeats this process until all the gradients are being aggregated. As we can see that, this traffic pattern can lead to the in-cast and the last link to the PS can be the network bottleneck. We think that programmable switch with in-network processing can reduce this bottleneck. The programmable switch offers intended packet processing and in-network state. As this figure shows, users can program the switch ingress and egress pipeline and store the state across packets in the switch memory, which we call as register. This suggests an opportunity to reduce the training time by moving gradient aggregation into the network. SwitchML is the first step to do the in-network aggregation for distributed training, but targets at the single rack settings. To support the multiple jobs, SwitchML proposed to statically partition the switch memory among the jobs before job start. As this figure shows, each job gets allocated a partition of the switch memory through the entire job running. However, this approach has two main shortcomings. First, we observe that the DT jobs go through on and off aggregation phases as this figure shows. The interval when the throughput is zero are where the computation takes over. No network communication happens, but the switch memory are still reserved for the jobs. This the static allocation can lead to the inefficient usage of the switch resources. Secondly, with ML model getting larger, a single job can span multiple racks. For example, the bird large training requires multiple racks as the 92 nodes cannot fit into one rack. This is the key goal of ATP is to speed up multiple DT jobs in a cluster while maximizing the benefits from in-network multi-switch aggregation. In this talk, I will mainly discuss ATP design to support multi-tenant scenario, then I will briefly talk about the multi-rack support and the additional challenges to support ATP. To support multiple jobs run simultaneously while maximizing the switch resource utilization, ATP chooses to dynamically allocate the switch memory in the per packet level. As we see from this figure, the switch allocates a set of memory, which we call as the aggregator, when we load the switch program. The aggregator in the switch is the computation unit where the aggregation happens. The gradient packets sent from the workers occupy the switch by randomly hashing to the whole memory, as this figure shows. Now let's see an example. On how ATP works. Workers hash gradient index to identify an aggregator as a switch, if it is available. Switch stores the gradient packets and aggregates the incoming gradients from all the other workers. When it receives the last gradient, it sends the aggregation results to the PS. And then PS sends the parameter packet back to the switch, which frees the aggregator and multicast the results to all the workers. Moving on, as switch memory is limited, so it is possible that the aggregators are not available in the heavy contention for the switch memory among the multiple jobs as this figure shows. ATP designs a mechanism called the best effort to handle this. In other words, a fraction of aggregation will, will fall back to the end host. And let's see an example. Worker 1's gradient packet arrives at the targeting aggregator, which is occupied by another job. This it gets forwarded to the PS. 
as well as other workers' gradient packets. Then the PS does the aggregation over these gradient packets from all the workers and send the parameter packet back to the switch, which only multicasts the results back to the workers. In the previous two cases, either aggregator is available or unavailable when both gradient packets arrive. However, it is possible that the targeting aggregator is unavailable when the first gradient packet arrives, but it becomes available when the later packets arrive. For example, the targeting aggregator is reserved by another job when worker 1's gradient packet arrives. Thus, it gets forwarded to the PS. After that, the targeting aggregator is deallocated. Thus, the packets from other workers reserve this aggregator. At this moment, the aggregation cannot be finished either at the switch or at the PS, because either of them only see the partial aggregation results. ATP detects this issue by detecting the missing results. In this case, since aggregation continues, when workers receive the higher sequence number of the parameter packets, for example, packet BCD as shown in this figure, the workers retransmit packet A to complete this aggregation. For more details, please refer to the paper. To support the large-scale DT jobs, ATP designs for interact aggregation. Aggregation can be done at every layer of the network topology. However, doing aggregation at higher layers can increase the protocol complexity due to the ECMP-like non-deterministic routing. Just to minimize the network changes, our solution is to support two levels of aggregation by only deploying ATP at toss switches. ATP's interrack aggregation can happen when workers and the PS is located at different racks, as this figure shows. So here, the aggregation is first done at the local toss switch, then send the partial results to the PS toss switch, which does the second level of aggregation over these partial aggregation results. With this approach, ATP can scale up to 1024 workers. For more details, please refer to the paper. To realize such an in-network aggregation service, ATP also needs to address these four uh, following additional challenges. First of all, because packet loss can happen with any reasons in the network. Thus, we need a reliability. Reliability usually means recovery from packet loss in the network transport semantic. However, in this scenario, the packet loss can lead to the incorrect aggregation at the switch. And we need to ensure the exact one's aggregation. In addition, ATP does not have the control plane to deallocate the aggregators for a job. This it might lead to the memory leak. In other words, the aggregators are reserved forever but not used. Secondly, because ATP is designed to co-locate with other jobs and other applications in a cluster, this ATP needs congestion control. We have to rethink congestion control because the, now the communication pattern is that n flows are merged into one flow. This is a congestion signal. For example, ECM marking might be dropped when we drop the packet by design. Lastly, currently programmable switch does not support floating point computation. So similar as SwitchML, ATP converts the gradients to 32-bit integer at workers by a scaling factor. However, the integer aggregation might lead to the overflow at switch. In the interest of time, please refer to the paper for more details about how we address these challenges. We implement ATP as a BIPS plugin by replacing the networking stack at the end host and use P4 to implement the in network aggregation service at the, the barefoot Tofino switch. We evaluate ATP on a nine machine cluster and compare against the various state of the art approaches of a variety of ML models with a focus on the training throughput and accuracy. First, we compare ATP against all baselines for different models in a single job case. This figure shows the training throughput for different models by comparing ATP against all these baselines. The main takeaway is that ATP is comparable to and in many cases outperforms the state-of-the-art approaches. In addition, as expected, ATP gets larger performance gains on network-intensive 
workloads like VGG, then the computation-intensive workloads like ResNet. Moving on to demonstrate the benefit of ATP's dynamic allocation over the static approach, we set up an experiment with 3 VGG16 jobs for both approaches, where the static approach evenly distributes aggregators to each job. Here we first tune PTA, peak throughput aggregators, which is the number of the aggregators to make each job to achieve the peak aggregation throughput. To measure the impact of sharing started under contention, we reduce the number of available aggregators from 100% to 33% of PTA, and measure the training throughput. As this figure shows, both approaches work well if PTA is larger than 75%. But the static scheme suffers at small numbers of the PTA, while ATP's dynamic scheme uh, degrades only slightly. In summary, when the switch memory is sufficient, ATP's dynamic approach has the comparable performance to the static scheme. If the switch memory is insufficient, ATP outperforms the static scheme. For more evaluations about the packed loss recovery overhead, time to accuracy, and congestion control in various scenarios, please refer to our paper. In summary, ATP provides a network service that supports best effort dynamic in-network aggregation aimed at mountain-rack mountain-tenant. To achieve such in-network service, we co-designed and host logic and the switch logic for the reliability and the congestion control in this scenario. To achieve the better training accuracy, we propose new solution to deal with the floating points. ATP is open sourced here. Please feel free to try it. Thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to answering your questions.